The third robot I have my kids build is Driving Base 1 out of the Spike Prime set. This is the first wheeled robot the kids build. I don't really have them use the third large motor in the project, but some of the kids still figure out how to make it run. Or if they ask, I'll show them. You will see all sorts of things spinning on that large motor by the end of the lesson. The assignment I give them is very simple. My tables have some X's on them, or I can set up a pair of blocks at each end of the table. The kids are asked to start the robot in one corner and run a square loop around the outside of the table and end up back where they started. Some kids get this very quickly while others take quite a bit of time. After the kids complete the square loop around the table, I then ask them to program their robot to complete a figure eight around the blocks and end up back where they started. This is a bit more challenging, but the kids still get it pretty quickly. The program for the driving base is basically the same as the hopper. Under when program starts, they still need to always set up their movement motors and movement speed, and I keep emphasizing the importance of this just being the habit that they always do first. And then again, I have them go to events and bring in a when left button is pressed event. This is where I also introduce them to the wait command in control. I have the students start under the stack with a wait of one second, and I tell them to change it to 0.5 and set up a half second wait. If you don't put a wait between the when left button is pressed and the movement commands, the robot will take off and get interfered with by the finger that is still partially in contact with the robot when it starts moving. This will cause the robot to veer off to the left or right. The half second wait gives the students plenty of time to get their hand clear before the robot takes off. So now that they've got their half second wait in, they can begin putting in movement commands for certain amounts of rotations and turns to make the robot go where they want it to go. Something else students learn in this lesson is that the robots are a little more difficult to keep consistent when they set the movement speed to 100%, and they will set the movement speed to 100%. The motors don't engage at the exact same time, and the robots will almost never take off straight, favoring the direction of the wheel that engages first. The students learn they have to set the movement speed much lower, around 50%, if they actually want their robots to launch straighter and more consistently. I tell them that although the robots are expensive, they are very cheap for what they are capable of doing, so they don't have that kind of precision. As with the other build, kids add all kinds of personal touches to their robots. You will eventually see eyes, gears attached to the large motor, and minifigs hanging off the robots in all sorts of places. These simple programs are more challenging for the kids than you might think, but also a great confidence builders that encourage them to keep learning about what they can do with these awesome little robots.